This is a short version, a simplified version, of what it means to have a hagata. Is the mind able to see how things are interconnected? Or does it not see the interconnection between things? Or on another level, can we begin to understand cause and effect? Or do we just see things as random without seeing how they're interconnected with each other? This is what it means to have the developed mind. But the second question, a little bit explained. It's a little bit more complicated, but I wanted to make it as clear as possible for our short period of time. Question number three. Now we're getting to the sixth pair. The sixth pair is Anuttara. So just a little review. We have the lusting mind and the non-lusting mind, the hating mind, the non-hating mind, the deluded mind, the non deluded mind. We have the collected mind, our unified mind, the distracted mind, and we have the mind that's able to see interconnectedness and the mind that's not able to see interconnectedness, number five. So now we're on to number six, Anantara. Mm. This is called the surpassed and the unsurpassed one. He understands the surpassed mind as surpassed and the unsurpassed mind as unsurpassed. What does this surpass and unsurpass mean? I don't think they're talking about cars racing on the highway. Who's passing who? What does this mean? So then again, you have to go back to the root of the word anuttara. Where is anuttara found? Well, anuttara is found in a very important teaching meaning what without a superior, nothing higher. Chinese Wuxian, it's also found in a phrase, very important phrase in all of Buddhism. It goes like this, Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, those people who have studied Buddhism, they know this phrase. This is the supreme, perfect enlightenment. This is the highest enlightenment. You know, there's, it's not just that there's one nirvana. There are several different kinds of or states of nirvana. It's with residue, without residue. Then this state is called the supreme, perfect enlightenment. The highest. Those who have recited the Heart Sutra, they know that this is found in the Heart Sutra in Chinese. This is transliterated there. Buddhists of the past, present, and future attain the supreme enlightenment, the Anuttara Samyaksam Bodhi. So what does this refer to? It turns out that this refers to those people who have followed the path. They have followed the Eightfold Path. They have followed it so well that they have come to realizations along this path that are supreme. They have attained the stream enter phase. They have attained the once returner phase. They return, attain the non-returner phase state. They attain the state of the great archons. So where you are on this path, whether you've had any of these attainments or are moving towards these attainments, this is what we measure against Anuttara. How much attainment have we done in our practice, and in our daily life, how are we able to assess, hmm, where am I along the way? Because in Buddhism, we don't give you a yellow belt, black belt, brown belt, you don't get a belt. You have to know yourself where your mind is. You can't rely on anyone else to tell you. 
You have to be very clear and humble about your own practice. People don't go around saying, oh, I've attained the third jhana today. And people don't do that. Because it's very personal, very private. Maybe you talk about your experiences with your teacher. But generally speaking, it's your own practice. We need to know. So this is the moment in the practice where you get to decide, oh, where am I along the path? Talking about this, uh, where am I along the path, and uh, the, uh, about rebirth. Of course, uh, when uh, a person attains the state of being a Buddha, no longer required to be reborn. There's no more karma to be reborn. But the rest of the people, all the beings in the world, they still have karma to work out. Their rebirth continues, not in a personal form, but the karma, the karmic seeds reborn. So there's a teaching in uh, Yogacara that's very interesting about uh, how it is that when a person can go into any one of seven different states of rebirth depending on their practice. So I was very curious about this and uh, I made up a little metaphor about this and I shared it with uh, Master Jiru and uh, he laughed very hard. Go so tell the other monastics. I'll share it with you. So it's as if you are in a going to, after your moment of death, you enter into an airplane and you're going to your next rebirth. And if you have not done any practice at all, only interested in worldly things, you end up in the baggage compartment of the plane. And when the plane takes off, you're just bouncing around in there. You have no idea where you're going, what's going on. It's, you're just at the mercy of your wholesome, unwholesome acts. No, no ability to direct the mind. If you've done some practice and you've taken it a little bit seriously, you've practiced well enough, maybe you can get a seat in the back of the plane near the bathroom. You're all squished in the air, get the odor of the bathroom once in a while, but you, at least you can look out the window and you can see it all going somewhere. If you practice even better, according to this metaphor, you can uh, get your seat in the coach or business class. Oh, if you're very lucky, you go first class. If you've really practiced well, maybe you can sit up in the cockpit. You can tell the captain where to go. And if you've really practiced well, then you can fly the plane. <coughs> However, if you're a bodhisattva, you get to be a flight attendant. <laughs> so it's very important to practice well in this life. Once in a while, it's good to pay attention to where the mind is. So the last two practices, the last two pairs, are very easy to understand, not so much in practice. The seventh one is, is the mind concentrated or not concentrated? This has to do with the practice of samadhi. Can you enter into the jhanas, the higher states? This is my second jhana, this means no more discursive thought. The mind is no longer chattering away. Only joyfulness in the mind. Happiness, one-pointedness in the mind. No more onset and analysis in the mind. And so forth. Can the mind go into these concentrated states? So that's number seven. 
and number eight has to do with is the mind liberated or not yet liberated? So these are the last two prayers. So we're going to do a little short meditation where you get to check where you are, what ticket you have for your trip. You do not too late for upgrade.